Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, Svelte. Today we are going to look at how to do friendly or pretty URLs. So think about going to some domain, forward slash users slash David W. Parker, as opposed to forward slash users slash one or 70 or 7 million. Um, I have a Patreon, throw that out there, as well as a newsletter, subscribe. That'd be fantastic, support. Really appreciate it if you like this content. Let's go ahead and dig right in. So here's our product at the moment. I've changed some cards around, or changed some tailwind a little bit. So the expansion is now on the title only. And then I said, change this around to say posted by. And if you click anywhere on the posted by, we are at a new URL. You can see, you can't really see that very well, but it says forward slash users tester one. And then if we just load from this page, this is the information that is displayed. So that is what is new and what's happening in this episode. And we can go ahead and dig in. So we've changed a few other things. I'm going to dig into quick, quickly. Um, the first thing is our self config before was pretty incomplete and pretty barren. It basically just had kit, adapter, and target. I have gone ahead and changed it to be the versal one so we can deploy and test it easier. I added felt preprocess and with post CSS, post CSS true as well as this Vt SSR and giving in the package dependencies from our package JSON. In our package JSON, I've added and changed a few things here. Let me just glance over at my git k. I removed this feel human for CSS. I moved auto prefixer down and CSS nano down. Crypto.js is up here. Um, and then we have Post CSS, this was a, an extra one, so I just deleted it. We moved node fetch up and then added preprocessor. Of course, package JSON changed quite a bit because of that, the lock file, so we deleted that and regenerated. And this configuration was taken from basically a new Silk application. In app HTML, the only thing I added was a text decoration underline for links. That just makes it a little a little nicer when you're on here. You can see there's actual under, underlines on the links here. Um, we may change that later, but it's just before if you're tabbing through each of these, um, you might not have known that there were links there. So just a little way to look that make that look a little nicer. Um, because SvelteKit is moving so fast, uh, I did have to change the error file here. I had to add the script module with this load uh, function and make sure we're passing in props of error and status. It was currently breaking uh, with the latest version. So this was added, which will pass in the let error and status. Index, again, the main changes around this were dealing with design and HTML specifically. So let's go ahead and take a look. The main things were down here. Scroll way down. And our A tag went ahead and that's only wrapping around the title now. I got rid of that absolute block that was around the entire thing. So you can't really click anywhere anymore uh, for the entire thing. And then I have a separate tag, uh, which basically says forward slash users, post attribute user, and then the slug. I've also given it the cell kit prefetch to help it load a little bit faster. As a user, if you're hovering over that, it'll make extra requests. So we can actually open up our dev tools real quick to our network. And you can see if we go hover over each of these, it makes the respective request to the URLs. And that just makes it load just a little bit faster. It's already been loaded. So nice little thing that SvelteKit provides. And other than that, everything is, should be more or less the same. So on our slug here, so this is um, dynamic routing in SvelteKit. So let's load up the kit docs real quick. And we'll go to routes. So you, they have this REST parameter routes. It says a, rest, a route can have multiple dynamic parameters. For example, source, routes, and then 
brackets category forward slash brackets item dot svelte. Um, and then through these dynamic parameters, you have access to the underlying uh, objects uh, of what their names are as keys. So in this example here, forward slash uh, bracket org, forward slash bracket repo, tree, branch, and file, you could see org for this URL here. It's really big for you guys. Svelte kit, J, uh, svelte kit gets tied to org. Repo gets tied to kit. Branch, which is in brackets, gets tied to master. And then the file, which is the rest, this is using the rest notation here, gets uh, tied to the file. And then you can do just singular ones here. So you could do something like boss. And in the real world example provided by SilkKit, they commonly use slug. So this is like if you're thinking of a blog article or something. So I added a new route called bracket slug dot svelte. And that provides me with the slug variable within the params. So in our uh, module here, I'm going to import my API. I'm going to build a load function. So export async function load. And I'm going to take in the page as well as the session. The session is where I'm going to have my API endpoint. And I'm going to build the URL. And from our previous episode, you know it's API v1 users and then forward slash slug. So now I have access to the slug provided in the URL here. So this gets to API v1 users forward slash tester1. And then I can make a request to the endpoint. And if I get a response back, I'll go ahead and just set that to local user within the props object. And for now, I don't want to return a 404, but if I just got rid of this, it would return a 404 not found otherwise. For now, I'm just going to return an empty string. And then here, you could see local user that ID, local user attributes and slug. So actually, in fact, if I do this, it should just blow up because it's not found uh, on here. So I'd want to do something like this. Now, if I go there, you could see send to find. Or if we don't want it to fall into the application itself, we can get rid of that entirely. And then if we go to a bad one, it returns a 404. So, you know, we have multiple options about how we want to approach this. Um, down within our script tag, we're going to go ahead and get the pr uh, prop that's passed in, local user. So export let local user, and that takes in the result from the API request. If you don't remember what the API request looks like, you can go ahead and we'll do one real quick. So this is what we're getting back, JSON the data object, you have an ID, or attributes. We're just setting a, the head. And then it's very it's a little bit of syntax for Tailwind to center it. And then we're just going to set the ID, attributes, uh, slug, and the display name. So that is a, a nice and simple way that you can have pretty URLs in SilkKit. If you liked and subscribed, that would be fantastic, and I will see you guys next time.